Okay, so I've been seeing a lot of negativity around Pokemon Unite because people are saying that it's pay to win. This is false. Unless you want to take the term pay to win to its most dishonest extreme. And I'm going to prove that in this video, so please stick around. So the idea behind Pokemon Unite being pay to win is that you can use gems to upgrade items. Those items will then give you an advantage inside of battle, and it's going to make it to where you win off of that advantage. Because here's what happens. Item enhancers. Item enhancers effectively cost one gem per enhancer, because if you don't have any tickets and you try to buy it, this is dishonest. Like, I disagree with this kind of tactic where, you know, if you overdo it, it will then be like, oh, we're going to deduct Aos gems because you don't have enough tickets instead of pressing down being your maximum limit. Like, that is the one thing I disagree with. Like, let's say I had 300 tickets. If I press down, it should just go to 30 and then do that. But I've actually accidentally spent gems because I'm just like, oh, I'll just buy 50 right here. Boom, there we go. Now, I do think this is sneaky, but I'm not going to take it to its most bad faith conclusion be like, oh, this is greedy, they're just trying to farm people and they don't care about their games or their audience or anything. And I'm also not trying to be edgy and just hating on Game Freak, even though Game Freak isn't making this game, or trying to be toxic towards the new Pokemon MOBA. Pokemon Unite is an incredible game, and it's absolutely worth a shot, regardless of the pace scheme that's going on. Also, it's a free game, and there's a lot of fun to be had in this free game. So what I first want to do is show some gameplay that I took earlier, just kind of like breaking down the actual impact that items have, and then explaining how it's not really pay to win. Let's do the level two whirlpool because that's where we ended up. So let's center that perfect. Oh, 1674 level two whirlpool plus 16 special attack. Let's see how much we get from just plus 16 special attack. 1728. So 16 special attack on Whirlpool, which is probably one of the highest scaling things, is 50? 54. 54. Okay, so if we do some quick math, we can figure out what is going on here. Now, the only real advantage that money might give you is going from level 20 to level 30, because you can get an item to level 20, and even multiple items to level 20 for free very easily. More of that breakdown later on this video. But the thing is, going from level 20 to level 30 is only a 50% increase in the base stat of that item, because it scales linearly. So if I spent the $40 to get the choice specs to level 30, we would get 27 more damage at level 2, which drops off because you do gain stats as you level up, which means we get 1.6% more damage in the ultimate best case scenario where you're getting the most effect out of the item, even though you don't really battle anyone until level 3, on one of the highest damage characters eating a full skill shot. So, yeah. Alright, so let's see what this means for another character. I'm going to bring out Ninetales, I'm going to do an auto attack, and I'm also going to use an ability. Then I'm going to take the items off, and I'm going to see how much of an advantage it is. But I think Cramorant is like the worst case scenario, so let's just get into it. Actually, Ninetales is a little trickier because of the passive, but let's see what happens if we land Icy Wind and Powder Snow at level 3 with these extra stats, plus one passive. So 166, 517, and then ends up being 1159. We can also see a basic attack doing 150 at level 3. Alright, so let's see how much an auto attack does. 141, so it scales exactly, and then we can do our combo, and we did 117 move damage. So the difference between a level 17 muscle band and a fully stacked muscle band at level 30 is going to be 6 damage per auto attack. Also, Pokemon that have higher base attack is just going to feel less of an effect off of those items. And the difference between items and no items on the special attack is going to be 40 per 16 ability power. So we add 8, split the difference, that's 20. But wait a second, I just showed that items give an advantage, which means they're pay to win, which means you're an idiot, Verlisify. Hold up. Let's let's not jump to conclusions just yet. So here is the breakdown for item enhancers. I know a lot of people have probably like talked about this number or something. This was just the person that responded to me, so I did want to give them credit from the Discord. But it's 82 enhancers, then 567 total, then 2,500. And that's where the big leap comes into play. If you drop a ton of money, you get an item from level 20 to level 30, and then you're getting an advantage pay to win. Wait, again, just give me some time. We're going to break this one down because it's not as bad as everyone is making it out to be. 
So first off, let's look at the items, because this is where the big information comes in. That item passives only happen at level 1, 10, and 20. So it's not like level 20 to 30 is giving you 50 more max hit points per dunk, or whatever all these other stats are. 3 attack, whenever you score, 3% uh, more hit points, you know, all these passives. That's only at level 20, and as we saw, level 20 is fairly achievable, and then it just like kind of gets exponential from there. So let's hop back into Pokemon Unite and see how the paid currency works. So there is a first time purchase bonus, which means if you spend $8, you get roughly two items to level 20, and that's two thirds of your maxing out. So that's actually a pretty decent chunk of stats. But we need to look elsewhere in the game because I think one thing that people are missing with this is that by leveling up, you get an insane amount of tickets and enhancers. So I think it's more pay to skip than pay to win. And that's kind of like what this video is going to do. It's just going to unravel the whole pay to win narrative more and more. Unless, like I said at the beginning of the video, if you want to take it to its most extreme dishonest conclusion. If you're thinking like, oh, getting 1% advantage for $20 is pay to win. Are you really winning off of just a 1% advantage? Like, I also want to kind of break it down to what pay to win means. So I think a lot of people have just diluted it to where if there's any monetization in a game whatsoever, it's evil microtransactions and the company is greeting, even though this is a free to play game that has servers and a large player base and everything needs to be maintained and updated and stuff. So you're getting an incredible amount of value from free to play and you just need to play the game. Now, another thing to consider is that you don't get to upgrade items until level nine. So at that point, you already have a good chunk of item enhancers for your first couple of upgrades. And if we go back here, that's one item to level 10 because of all the other incentives and stuff going on. And then you don't get your third item until level 11. Level 12, you get more upgrades or more enhancers for that upgrade. So by just playing the game and getting a good amount of experience and good amount of levels, you're actually able to get to a nice shelf to where at least one Pokemon will have all of their items at level 10. Still an advantage, but you need to stay with me here because one thing that's weird about Pokemon Unite is they let you in ranked at level 6. League of Legends is level 30 and that takes like a hundred hours to get into, but we can speed up what's going on here. So if we go back to the shop, we go back to the Aos Emporium, we enter in here, we go to the items, uh, there's a booster. So maybe this is just from people not understanding everything inside the game, but a seven day battle point boost card, this is experience. At the end of the game you get experience and those are your battle points. So if you buy this booster, which is free currency, you're going to be leveling up faster. So if you just like grind out in a seven day period, you're definitely getting more than 400 of those tickets back in what you paid. So let's go over here. There's 300 at level 20. And then more tokens. So if you're using the tickets to exchange for enhancers, yeah, you're still getting more, 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 more. So I mean, you can offset the amount of currency put into the game with just a decent amount of play, which is actually less than other games. Now we can keep breaking down the pay to win argument by looking at the battle pass because the battle pass has free stuff in it. Now I maxed it out, which is actually a mistake. Like, yes, Verlissify is a hypocrite because he has a video about spending $100 on Pokemon Unite. I actually squandered that money. Skip, like, paying money to skip the battle pass is more of a waste than a massive advantage. I saw, like, all these tokens and tickets I thought was going to be worth it. Nah, it really wasn't. But you can level up the battle pass pretty easily, and then you have all of this free stuff. And most of the upgrade currency is free. You're just paying for some extra cosmetics more than anything. And then with that battle pass... I don't remember if it gives you extra progress, but it only costs like 480 something. So if we go over here, go back to the gems. If we do the first time gem bonus, you can get the battle pass for $8 and still have 490 gems left over. But if we go to the shop, we can also save on some of those tickets by just buying this, you know, the battle point boost. And that's only 40, 40 gems is paying less than a dollar to speed up item acquisition pay to win. At the very least it is pay to skip, but when is there also just an acknowledgement of fair monetization? Like, that is incredible. That deserves credit, if anything. Now there are the energy tanks and energy tank boosters, and that's where things get kind of weird. I do think that is more pay to skip, because I'm trying to break this down at the most basic level. Is it pay to win? Does money give you a win, or does it give you a much higher chance of winning? I don't think so, but if we look at the rewards, there is a chance that you can get tokens, tickets, and 
enhancers, but also there's just RNG involved. You can get unlucky and then get no tickets and no item enhancers, and you get 1,000 energy per week. So if you just like open 10 of these and then you don't get anything, that's kind of unlucky, but that just kind of varies from person to person. So someone could just get more luck than you and then have better items off of that. Kind of silly, but it's also not that big of a deal. Now we also need to look at some of the other things, because by just playing the game, if you just play every day, you're getting a crazy amount of stuff. Like, 600 tickets, well, that actually turns into 60 item enhancers, and that's going to get you a tenth of the way to 20. So, I mean, you do a couple of those. Daily missions, also giving you tickets. I think at some of these give you um, enhancers as well. There's also challenges. These challenges are pretty good. The tokens are pretty good. I think it's also about being smart with how you spend your currency. Don't use tickets to buy the items because you don't need to. Some of the items are actually given to you as a part of these challenges or daily logins or incentives and stuff, but spending a thousand tokens, also not that bad. So just get the core items that you need and then use the tickets to get as many item enhancers and then you're not actually needing gems to skip as much as everyone's kind of claiming for this massive advantage. But okay, let's talk about the elephant in the room. 20 to 30, you absolutely need to whale 2,000 enhancers. And the way that it goes is one enhancer is roughly one, actually one enhancer is directly one gem. So for 2,000, it takes $40, or maybe like if you're doing the uh, first boost. So if you do the one time, you get one item from 20 to 30 for 20 bucks, and then $40 for your next item. That's insane. So yeah, if you're rich, if you're making like six figures a year or you come from an incredibly wealthy millionaire family and money means nothing to you, you can just buy every item to level 30 and skip all of that that way. But let's break down the numbers and math even more because like I showed at the beginning of the video, special attack doesn't have a lot of value. It adds a couple of points and that's on Cramorant, one of the highest damage mages with some of the best scaling in the game. So if we head back over here, and we actually click on this, we can see attack plus 18. Now it all scales linear linearly, so at level 10, you're getting plus 6 attack. At level 20, you're getting plus 12 attack, and at level 30, you're getting plus 18. We can also look at this for the uh, wise glasses. So it goes 13, 26, 39. For that $40, you're getting plus 13 special attack, which as we saw, translates to... 50 damage in the most extreme circumstance. Now another thing to take into consideration is that one bar of health is actually a thousand health. So my Cramorant is starting the game with roughly 3500 health. And then it's only translating into like 50 more damage in the worst case scenario as the difference between 20 and 30. And as we saw, you can get all of your items or all the items you need on a core Pokemon to level 20 pretty easily just through basic gameplay and level ups and boosts and bonuses or also spending a very small amount of money. When games are costing $60 and there's also like monthly subscriptions and 10, 15, 20 dollars and Netflix and all these other things, is spending $8 to optimize your first double bonus really that bad? And also with the leftover gems, I guess you can directly convert those into enhancers and like top it off. But by playing free and just doing casual battles to learn the game because by level six if you have no MOBA experience or very little Pokemon Unite experience you're not ready for ranked by level six to be honest and you don't even have access to all of your um, items you don't have access to upgraded items or all of your equipment or anything like that so yeah it's you're better off for the sake of yourself and other people to get game experience to get levels to get experience and by the time you're honestly ready for ranked, you're going to have three items at level 20, if not a couple extra, because you just need to be playing more often. You know, the battle pass, uh, it starts giving you really good rewards depending on the missions. But I mean, like, login daily. 14 days, yeah, that does kind of feel sucky, and it does feel like it's locking you out a little bit. But again, we have the events, we have the missions, we have the challenges. There's all kinds of things going on. So if you just play a lot of Pokemon Unite, you will catch up very quickly. And then if you really want to get into the mud of the stats, there's nothing to consider that Pokemon stats go up as they level. So I mean, by the time you're in that first encounter, it might be like a level three fight. So there's gonna be diminishing returns on the advantage from items because items, the honest thing about them is that they don't have a massive advantage. Yes, you are disadvantaged if you don't have any items and everyone has level 30s, but the difference between level 20 and level 30 is like 2% and it only goes down from there. 
once Vespaquin spawns, once you do the first round of creeps, everyone's around level 4, level 5, and then it just kind of, yeah, again, it just kind of diminishes from there. So this is what I mean when it comes down to how you view pay to win. If you are an absolutist and you believe that no amount of money should ever give even the smallest of advantages, even if that means just spending $8 on a game that you love or $40 for a 1% efficiency increase, then I don't know what to say. You're, you're, you'll never be changed, but I just want to get these numbers out there because I'm seeing so much just knee-jerk, immediate negativity, and I honestly don't think it holds up when you just really break down what this translates to. Like, when you're like, oh man, you can just buy the max item and win. Nah, uh, it actually doesn't work out that way, and you can grind yourself back up. And at some point, everyone's going to have level 20 items, you know, a month from now after just playing the game naturally just a couple hours a day. It's also very addicting. You could easily get sucked into an eight hour grinding session because the game is fun. And if you're not losing anything because you're not playing ranked or if you're just kind of hanging out in beginner great ball tier and you're learning the game, then you're also not going to feel that disadvantage as much either. And if you're playing with friends who also just have more time, more money, more game experience, then you're also not going to feel the disadvantage as much, and eventually everyone's going to catch up. Yeah, there might be like some monetization that ends up pushing like a 25 to 30 a couple months from now, but overall, like this game is supposed to last for a while. People have been playing League of Legends for over a decade. So, I mean, if we look at this game from a year from now, you're going to have all your items at level 30, and then when the new item comes out, you're going to be able to max it instantly anyways, and then that advantage just doesn't exist. So, pay to skip at the very worst and at the most dishonest. Part of that's like, yeah, a couple bucks for a little bit of advantage, and you could just play the game and enjoy it without having this unnecessary hatred as well. If you're blaming your losses on pay to win over what amounts to a less than 1% stat advantage that just diminishes over time, you might have some other things to consider about the game. Like, that's where you need some self-reflection, to be honest. So overall, those are my thoughts. I just wanted to really break down because, again, I, th I think there's just a lot of ignorance and parroting going on, and hopefully these numbers just kind of open some eyes of what's going on here. So if you guys enjoy the video, hope you all have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.